food, like life, is a balance. Salty versus sweet, savory versus bitter. Health and nutrition is a big part of that balance. Stay with us today as we make our version of Chinese chop suey. You won't forget it. Welcome to the Anadai Chef. I am your host, Steve Anderson, and we are bringing heavy metal to your stovetops and to your lives. Today, we're going to make chicken chop suey. Now, this originally came over with the Cantonese immigrants, and they made it over in California, and that's where the dish was originally invented. And really, what it means is tap suey in Cantonese. And what that means is uh, the Americans kind of adopted that as chop suey, but really, it means mixed pieces. And what they did was they tried to create a dish that the generals and the military would eat. Uh, and the wars, and uh, so they they basically just harvested whatever they could find the vegetables and kind of put it together. Today we're going to do chicken chop suey. And the good thing about this dish, one of the things I found in my experience in making it, is my family loves it. Now, this day and age, when everybody's out there eating fast food and they're eating uh, a lot of unhealthy stuff, and it's really kind of hard to get kids to eat healthy, um, this is one of those dishes that is loaded with nutrients and vitamins, and the kids just devour it. They love it. And every time I make it, they love it. So. It's definitely worth uh, a little bit of time, a little bit of an investment. As you can see, there's a lot of different ingredients, but the good thing about it is, we're gonna talk a little bit about this as we go forward, is um, that you can substitute vegetables out. You can use what's in your pantry. That's the great thing about it is, um, there are some staples that you should have in it, but really you can throw, if you've got some onions, some celery, some peppers, some mushrooms, a lot of that staple stuff is in there already. You can throw whatever you have in there. And if you're missing something, it's not gonna make that big of a difference. Uh, so we'll go through some of the key ingredients and then we'll talk about some of the intangibles too. But um, the kids love it. Everybody here eats it up all the time. So we're gonna get right into it. And what we're gonna start with is, we're gonna start with the chicken. And I have cut the chicken breast into strips. And it's just your standard chicken breast that you pick up at the grocery store and I cut it into stir fry strips. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna set it up in a little bit of a marinade, give it some time to kind of marinate into, into some love. And then we're gonna saute that and then throw the veggies in and work with it from there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this chicken, I'm gonna put it in a bowl, and then we're gonna add about a tablespoon of soy, and that's uh, the good quality soy sauce. You wanna watch, it. some of the low sodium stuff is pretty good too. Uh, this is about a teaspoon of oyster sauce. Now it's kinda of like hoisin, but it's, it's a little bit different. Then I'm gonna put, this is regular uh, chicken stock, Low sodium is also good on that too because you can always add more salt. And I put, just there I probably put about a quarter of a cup of, uh, of chicken stock in there. And then I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of cornstarch right in there as well. And we're gonna use some of those ingredients again later on down the road, so that's why I didn't put it all in there. But then we're just gonna take a fork and we're gonna mix that up and we're gonna let that chicken kinda sit in that well. Now it, it's a little bit different than like a velvet sauce because a velvet sauce is more like a batter. If you notice when you're making the velvet sauce, we actually have that in one of our other episodes, in the Pad Thai episode. And it looks more like a, like a, like a, like a, a batter or a breading. And this here is just a, uh, it's more of a marinade. It's more of a liquid. So we'll let that sit. I actually have one already done. We're gonna get started. I'll show you how to saute that chicken up real quick. Now, uh, you want to find a pretty big pan because with all the different vegetables we're going to go in there with, you want to have enough room to, it's going to get really crowded really quick. Um, let's go through some of the vegetables that we have here today. Uh, we have some sugar snap peas, and these are, what I've done is, I've, this is a, pretty much what it looks like in the store, and then I've cut them down into thin strips. I just set them up the long way on the cutting board, and I just cut them down into long strips, okay? And then I have some scallions, I have some green peppers, this is some spinach. I love spinach and it's loaded with nutrients. Uh, I have some white onions. I have some bean sprouts, some celery. I have some bok choy. And then I have three different kinds of mushrooms here. Now you can put whatever kind of mushrooms you like. We have, here we have, um, we have shiitake mushrooms, we have oyster mushrooms, and we have uh, cremini, baby bella mushrooms. And they're all loaded with flavor. I'm on a mushroom kick right now, so that's why I have all three. Um, 
And then we've got some spices that we're gonna to add to it also as it cooks. But the thing, the good thing about it is it's more like a soup when it's done because the chicken stock kind of bal it, it kind of softens everything up and it, uh, it, it's a nice broth at the end of the day. So that's why you're gonna serve it in a bowl. But the good news is all of those vegetables that you're gonna be cooking, all those vitamins don't get cooked out of it because they get cooked right into that liquid. So it's all natural, it's all, it all stays in there and all that love goes right into your bodies and it's really good for you. So let's get rolling. Let's get this pan going here. And with the pan, I'm gonna saute with a little bit of the canola and olive oil blend that we like to use. And I just put probably about maybe three tablespoons in there. Because we're gonna we want we want to pan fry that chicken. And we're gonna bring this pan up to high heat. And I want to talk while it's heating up a little bit about oil. Oil uh, has all different different oils have different smoke points. And what I mean by smoke points is when you turn the heat on and they, they're on under a lot of heat on the pan. Uh, they start to burn at different levels. Um, some of the worst ones are sesame oil. Uh, some of the better ones are like a light vegetable oil or uh, like a canola oil, corn oil. Those are all really, really high temp oils and they're good to saute with, but the, the negative thing is they don't have a ton of flavor. So what we like to do on the show is we mix the canola with the olive oil. So you get the flavor of the olive oil, but you've got the uh, integrity of the canola oil in the high heat. So it just, it's a good balance for saute. But uh, you, you know, just keep that in mind when you're buying and what, what the application is gonna be for. You want the full flavored ones for things like salad dressings, but when you're doing saute, you wanna have something that's gonna be able to stand up to the heat that's not gonna start to burn really quick. So as you can see, we've got this thing cool, we've got this crank and I can feel the heat coming off of this, but there's no smoke coming from the oil yet. So we're in good shape. Okay, so we're gonna take this chicken and we're gonna add this right into this pan here. And yeah, we got some life going on in here. And be careful when you're taking the chicken out of the marinade, shake off some of the excess marinade because you don't want it to really splash up too much in that oil. So we wanna to try to be very careful when we're working with saute because of that very reason, because there's a lot of water in that marinade. If the water mixes with the oil, we're gonna have a big old mess in the hand. So really, we're just gonna brown this chicken up because what we're gonna do afterward is we're gonna saute the veggies up in the same oil and we're gonna add the chicken back to the broth again. So what will happen is the chicken, the chicken will finish cooking into that stew. So, so we're pretty good here now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these guys out of here. And we got some nice little brown bits on the bottom of that pan that, that are gonna add to our flavor profile. And so now we've got that oil still going in there, but you know what, it looks like I'm gonna add just a little bit more oil because we're gonna be adding a lot of vegetables to saute now with the same oil. And I probably about another tablespoon or so. And I've got fresh minced ginger. And I'm probably gonna put in this batch, I'm probably gonna put about two teaspoons. And the same thing with garlic. And if you remember, and I'm gonna put some, some green onions in there, and this is probably about, yeah, about the same thing, about two, maybe two uh, to three tablespoons, a teaspoon of uh, minced onions. And what this is called is aromatics. If you remember, in one of the previous episodes, I've got, um, I've got this in the oil here, and we're actually flavoring the oil to get ready for all these vegetables to go in. So now let's, uh, let's get started adding the vegetables because we want to give them a light saute before we add them into the stock and turn it into a stew. Uh, so we're gonna throw, I'm gonna throw probably about a, say about a half a cup of the snow peas into the, uh, into the oil. And we'll throw about the same amount of onion. Same for the pepper. Bean sprouts. And that's about a half a cup of everything so far about a half a cup of celery. And this is celery is cut on a bias. As you can see like this here, it's more like a stir fry cut. What I've done is I've taken the celery stalk like this and I've cut it on a sharp angle. And that's called on the bias, bias cut. Then I'm gonna throw a couple of, probably about a half a cup of each kind of mushroom. I've got the shiitakes, I've got the oysters, and the cremini mushrooms. These are my favorites. The cremini are my all time favorites. And what we're gonna do is we've still got spinach and bok choy left to do. But I just wanted to give some of the more more firm vegetables a chance to kind of suck that up a little. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, Bobby, getting some of that. 
So it's, and, and as you can see, there's little brown bits in there, and that's coming from the bottom of the pan. That was from that chicken that we sauteed earlier, and that chicken flavor is going right into that stock now. It's gonna go right into this whole thing and, and add a whole other element here. So then, and now we're gonna go ahead, before we start to add anything, any uh, liquid to it, we're gonna throw a good cup of spinach in there. And then bok choy. And this is what bok choy is here. It's a leaf that looks like this. It almost looks like a cross between a cabbage and a celery stalk. And what we've done is we've done the same thing that we've done with the uh, with the celery, is we've cut it on a bias. And you want to get some of the white stem part and some of the greens in there. They're both equally uh, as delicious. And you want to get the nutrition, nutritional value out of both of them. Because what they say is the greener the vegetable, the better it is for you. So if, if that's the case, then spinach is the best thing for you. Bok choy has a lot of nutrients as well. So there it is. I mean, that's that's our foundation right there. What we're going to do now is we're going to add our sauce. We're going to turn it into the stew. And then we'll add our chicken back to it and finish it off. So in our sauce, I've got the same oyster sauce that we marinated in. We're going to probably add uh, just a little more than a tablespoon, I would say. Maybe a tablespoon and a half of oyster sauce. And the same thing with soy. About a tablespoon and a half of soy. Now really, this dish is about the chicken stock. The soy is more of a flavor balancer. It's more of an enhancer. So we don't want to go too crazy on the soy because we don't really want it to be too dark. So now, oh my God, it smells incredible. Wow. All right. Now, that's, now it smells like a stir fry. If you've ever made a stir fry at home, the aroma's coming off of this. It smells just like a really sweet stir fry. But now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add about two cups of chicken stock to this. And the reason why is because we're going to thin this down a little, let all those flavors marry. We're going to bring this back up to a simmer. We're going to tighten it up with a little bit of cornstarch. And then we're going to throw our chicken into it and we're going to bring it right back up again. So because the, what the cornstarch is going to do is the cornstarch is going to act a little bit like a thickening agent. What that's going to do is it's just going to help to make it so it's not too soupy. It'll have a little bit of integrity when it sits on that rice or on that noodle or whatever you plan on serving it over. But um, the, the trick is with this, remember, too, is it's, it's served in a bowl. Uh, but before I add anything else, I'm going to take a little bit of our house wine, our featured wine today, which is a Chenin Blanc. And I'm going to add about a quarter of a cup. And that's more or less just to get that essence in there. So it, it pairs with the dish a little bit better, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But the um, the aroma is coming here now, and the, the vegetables are starting to soften. It's going to be able to be able to eat it with a spoon when we're all done. Uh, you can take this now, and you can add other vegetables. We talked about different vegetables: red peppers. You can add carrots. You can add some tofu to it. You can add uh, asparagus tips to it. This, whatever the season is, you can also change this to go along with the seasons too. I wouldn't even be against maybe throwing some butternut squash in it in the fall or things like that. I mean, there's all different types of things that you could do to add to this dish uh, that it could tie into the seasons and, and, and make it more of a you know year-round thing. So now at this point, we're going to add our cornstarch. And what I want to do is I'm going to take maybe about a half a cup of chicken stock that I have here, and I'm going to turn this into a slurry. Uh, so what a slurry is, is when you have cornstarch and, and, uh, and some sort of a liquid, usually it's water or some sort of a stock, and I'm going to add about a, a tablespoon of cornstarch to that quarter cup or half a cup of chicken stock. And as you can see, when I'm, when I'm marrying this together, it really starts to look like a, almost like a milk. But watch what happens when we add it to the saute over here. See how it's already starting to thicken up now? It's looking more like a gravy. And if it gets a little too tight, you can always add a little more chicken stock to it. We're gonna just thin this down just a little bit with some chicken stock. Because sometimes the cornstarch has a reaction to it and it really tightens it up really, really nice. But sometimes it ends up a little bit too tight. You don't want it to be like a gravy. So we thin it down with just a little bit more chicken stock. And now, while it's coming back up, we're gonna add our chicken right back to it again. And let it come right up. Oh 
wow, what a, what a scent coming from this. Absolutely incredible aroma. The fresh ginger, the vibrancy of the ginger and the garlic sauteed in there, the, um, the fresh bright vegetables, the bok choy, the garden scents coming from here, the uh, mung bean sprouts. Mm. Oh, the meatiness of the mushrooms coming through on that. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Delicious, delicious. And that's really all there is to it now. A lot of people have different uh, different things that they add crunchy stuff to add texture to the top. Um, sometimes they'll, at the end when they go to plate it up, they'll throw some crispy wontons on it or they'll, they'll throw some chow mein noodles on there or uh, there's all kinds of different things that you can do like Asian style stuff that they put on top, some different Asian croutons or uh, what I like is I like toasted sesame seeds. So we've actually toasted up some sesame seeds and I don't know where they are. So I got the sesame seeds now and Customary to uh, what, what people sometimes like to serve this over. We talked a little bit about the different noodles or rice. We've actually cooked up some white rice and ahead of time, we're just going to serve ours over white rice. And the, the thing about this is we just cooked it to package directions. Uh, use your favorite brand of white rice. Uh, sometimes people like a nice jasmine to go with the Asian food and that, that would be something that I would recommend. Or you could just use a standard uh, white converted uh, Uncle Ben's or whatever, other brands, other popular brands. So what we'll do now is I'm going to take our plate presentation and we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this up. And we'll put probably maybe a quarter cup of white, half a cup of white rice on the bottom of the plate, down the bottom of the bowl here. And then we'll take our chop suey, or the Cantonese style tap suey, and we will throw it in here, right over. Oh. And make sure you load it with broth too, because that's where all the vitamins are. And we're gonna take this just like this. Oh man. And we're gonna put some chopsticks in here. And on a cold day, or when you're not feeling well, we're gonna finish it with some nice, crunchy, stove-toasted sesame seeds. It goes right on top. And there we have the anodized chef's version of chicken chop suey. And uh, good luck trying to eat that with the chopsticks. But the broth, you can take it in the bowl after it. Just sip it like that. But uh, so anyway, so our featured wine, and uh, we did some research on this because honestly, I wasn't really sure what kind of wine to serve with Chinese food, other than, you know, uh, uh, it's gotta be something white, obviously. So I did a little research and I found this Chenin Blanc, and um, it was this or something else, and we really liked this. And uh, so Bob and I popped this open a little bit earlier and we gave it a try, and I couldn't believe the balance of this. And this is a Sebeca or Sebeca, I'm not really sure how to pronounce the brand, I apologize. 2008, Chenin Blanc, and uh, the, the body of it, uh, I'm a red wine drinker myself, but the body of it really, really stands up to the integrity of this Chinese food, and it's, it's awesome. It's a beautifully balanced, uh, su sweet enough to accommodate the, uh, the, the Chinese food. So perfect, perfect pairing, I think, another one. Uh, but I just wanted to say, a shout out to my, my boys and girl over at OG. Thank you very much for your support continued. And thank you, thank you for joining me in my madness, my magic, and my mayhem. We will see you next time.